Righty guys, so this is the world's first T1.0 native lens for the RF mount and it's the Zongi, or I think it's called Zongi Optics 35mm T1.0 cinema lens and boy, this is, this is just something else. guys my name is Andrew Murphy from Down Under in Gold Coast Australia. So if you've been in the cinema lens game or you're thinking about entering it then the new Speedmaster lenses from Zongi Optics previously known as Mitocon should definitely be on your radar. So number one they are a T1.0 minimum aperture which is super duper fast and allows a ton of light into your sensor. And number two they are dirt cheap for what they are like this is 599 US dollars for a T1.0 cinema lens, like, what? So firstly, the Zongi Optics Speedmaster 35mm has an ultra fast T1.0 aperture, a professional cinema housing, is a very compact and lightweight design, has stepless aperture control, a smooth and long precise focus throw, low focus breathing, nine iris blades, and is perfect for the C70 and also the red Komodo as well. And it also comes with a five year warranty as well if you buy it off the Zongi Optics web store. So now the biggest draw card of this lens is the fact that it boasts that T1.0 minimum aperture, which is ridiculously low and one of the most impressive features of this lens, to be honest. If you look at basically any other cinema lens that has a minimum aperture close to T1.0, the price tag is just freaking insanely high like it's just ridiculous so the fact that they've been able to actually make a lens like this with a price tag of 599 us dollars it's just insanely good value so for context a t1.0 aperture will basically allow you to shoot in whatever lighting conditions you can think of and it also gives you a super duper shallow depth of field as well now a typical low aperture lens, for instance, would sit around, well I'd say T1.8 is a pretty low aperture lens, but if you put this at T1.0 and then at T1.8, you can easily tell the difference between the bokeh and the out of focus parts of the image. And the reason that is, is because T1 is nearly two stops brighter. If I also want to actually adjust the settings on the camera, this is how much brighter it would be from T1.8 to T1. And because this lens can let in so much light, you can do super cool things like lighting a scene with basically a candle like in these examples. However, the main downside to shooting wide open at T1.0 is the fact that the focus plane is insanely thin making it nearly impossible to focus if you do have like a moving subject. So at a distance, it's not too bad, but once the subject starts to get close, you'll have a seriously hard time trying to keep them in focus. But also because of this super low aperture, you can get like that Zack Schneider uh, Army of the Dead kind of look, basically on a shoestring budget compared to kind of like what they were using on that film. Now real quick, if you are enjoying this video and want to check out more content just like this, then consider subscribing to the channel because I make a ton of content just like this every single week. Now I did want to try this out on the uh, DJI 3D focus system, but I wasn't able to find someone with it in the time that I had access to this lens. And also as well, a big thanks to Zongi Optics for actually sending this out to me. Unfortunately, I don't get to keep this one. This is just a rental unit, although I would really love to keep this. This is just something really different. Now the housing and construction of this lens is actually really impressive. So it's a full metal construction with a gloss black finish with these super bright yellow markings on it, which stand out really good even at nighttime as well. And this is the native RF mount version, but it also comes in a Sony E mount, a Fuji FX and a micro four thirds mount as well. Now something a little bit weird is that the maximum aperture is only T16, which is 
a little bit different to kind of what I'm used to. Like I'm used to lenses going up to like T22, F22 kind of thing. But I guess they had to kind of like make a compromise whether they were going to keep the lens small or allow for a, a higher or a max aperture, say like T22. Uh, and I honestly don't mind not being able to go up to T22. I very rarely use it anyway. And I'd rather the lens be a little bit smaller to account for that. The focus throw on this thing is nearly 180 degrees, which is really good. And it's also really smooth as well. Plus having a declicked aperture means that you can actually change the aperture while you're filming. And it's not as noticeable in the final image. Now I do have to mention that this rental unit that I have, the, uh, the little lens hood end of it is like a little bit loose and it kind of like, if you hold on the lens hood here and try focus on a wrong angle, it does kind of jam up a little bit, but I think it's literally just like starting to come loose because it's been used by so many different people and kind of been like bashed around. But I'm hoping that that's something they fix when they actually send out the final units. Now I also have to mention as well, the case that it comes in, like look how, look how fancy this is. This is just so cool. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you know how much I actually appreciate like when brands put a bit of time into their packaging and this is just like some bloody royal shit going on here. Like, look at, like, I don't know. It's just textured, nice. Ah, oh, just like, as for first impressions, when I first saw this, I was like, damn, this is, this is cool. And again, just take a little bit more time putting some effort into your packaging. Goes a long way. Right, now back to the optics of this lens because I've been shooting quite a bit with it over the last few weeks. And I'm very impressed, but there are a few downsides. Now, sharpness wise, when you do get things in focus, it is very sharp. But again, getting things in focus, especially at T1, is sometimes a little bit of a challenge. But the big thing I noticed is that the chromatic aberration when shooting wide open at T1.0 is horrendous. Sometimes, like sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it is oh, real bad. And unfortunately, oh, sorry, I just had a package delivered, I think. I think this might be the cage for the C70, so very excited about that. Chromatic aberration, that's what we're talking about. And unfortunately, this is just something you're always gonna run into when you're basically buying a budget cinema lens. Now, the next downside is that the vignetting at T1.0 is like quite noticeable and quite bad, actually. It's, it almost looks like this isn't actually made for a super 35 mil lens, like it should be a little bit smaller. And you can see in these shots, kind of like just the edges are quite a bit darker so especially like when you're shooting in just like a blown out sky it becomes very apparent because the edges are a little bit darker so it just doesn't look as nice now as for bokeh only having nine iris blades does make the out of focus elements noticeably not round and it's not until around f2 that you get like a real clean or non-circular bokeh from edge to edge. And if we look at our edge to edge bokeh wide open at T1, you can see just how much it is actually getting chopped off towards the edges of frame. Like it almost looks like it's not made for a super 35 mil camera. As for focus breathing while shooting, I honestly didn't really notice too much, but after testing it out in the studio, it's actually very, very noticeable. So going from infinity to minimum focus, you can see just how much the image actually shifts when focusing this lens. Now flaring on this lens is actually another really cool characteristic of this lens that I really like. At T1, you get these really big flares over nearly the entire frame when the light source is near the center of the frame. But if we stop down to anything above T1, even like just above like T1.1, the frame gets super clean because of that main flare in the middle. But the coolest part in my opinion is the edge flaring. So when we bring the light source to the edge of the frame, we start to get these beautiful flares even after the light source has it completely left the frame, which I absolutely love. The minimum focusing distance on this lens is 36 centimeters, which is actually really good compared to other lenses kind of like in this price point. Uh, and shooting at the minimum focus distance will give you that super crazy shallow depth of field look like you can see in this shot. So now overall, considering the downsides, I still would basically like a million percent recommend this lens, mainly because like, it's so freaking cheap. You're getting so much for your money and it's super versatile because of that T1.0 minimum aperture. And like since getting this rental unit and just I guess shooting on it, it's just basically been glued to my camera because I can use it in any kind of situation. Like it doesn't matter if it's dark, it doesn't matter if it's bright, I can just shoot basically anywhere. And if you are gonna be shooting in like super low light conditions or you wanna add like a really unique depth of field look to your shots, then like there aren't really any other lenses that can give you that look. 
So definitely something to look at. Anyway, guys, if you did enjoy this review, then consider liking and subscribing to the channel. And if you want to find out more about the Zongi Optics Speedmaster 35mm T1.0 cinema lens, I'll leave some links down in the description below. And as always, stay creative and just be you. Have fun.